Here I'm looking at the effect of children, nasal congestion and ADHD. Now even though I'm honing in on children here, ADHD while it affects children, the same symptoms in some ways are affecting adults. Adults who sleep with their mouth open with continuous nasal congestion are often more irritable during the day. In quotes, and this is published in Allergy, Asthma, Immunology Medical Journal. In quotes, most children with ADHD display symptoms in skin prick tests. The skin prick test is basically where they prick the skin and they expose the area to an allergen and they see if a wheel develops. In other words, has the body reacted to it? Consistent with allergic rhinitis. Nasal obstruction and other symptoms of allergic rhinitis could explain some of the cognitive patterns observed in ADHD, which may result from sleep disturbance known to occur with allergic rhinitis. This is published in the journal ADHD. It's written by Dr. Josh Jefferson. Children who mouth typically do not sleep well, causing them to be tired during the day and possibly unable to concentrate on academics. If the child becomes frustrated in school, he or she may exhibit behavioural problems. Another paper, sleep disturbances, poor school performance and hyperactivity are all mental complications seen in many children related to their nasal allergies. This paper, Atabi, which would be an allergic reaction, was the strongest risk factor for habitual snoring in Singapore and the effect was cumulative. Children attending psychiatric services in Singapore may also have sleep disorders, the highest prevalence being in children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. In other words, ADHD is related to your sleep and the quality of your sleep is related to whether your mouth is closed or open. It's very simple, but sometimes the most simple things are completely overlooked. This paper, it's entitled A Practical Approach to Allergic Rhinitis and Sleep Disturbance Management. In quotes, sleep quality can be significantly impacted by nasal congestion a common symptom related to allergic rhinitis. This may lead to decreased learning ability, productivity at work or school and reduced quality of life. Another paper is published in Pediatrics. Inattention and hyperactivity among general pediatric patients are associated with increased daytime sleepiness and especially in young boys, snoring and other symptoms of sleep disordered breathing. If sleepiness and sleep disordered breathing do influence daytime behaviour, the current results suggest a major public health impact we have a lot of talk at the moment with the road safety campaign of drivers falling asleep behind the wheel. In the United States, when cops go to investigate an accident, the first thing they look at is whether there's skid marks before the accident. In other words, has the driver reacted by putting the foot on the brakes? And they're saying that up to 20% up to of road um, related, I'm not sure if it's fatalities, but say serious accidents here related to fatigue. Fatigue is a huge issue when you have sleep disordered breathing because it's shown in the studies that it, you have either three, three times or five times more likelihood of having an accident behind a wheel when you have poor sleep. Poor awareness. This is published in General Dentist. The vast majority of healthcare professionals are unaware of the negative impact of upper airway obstruction on normal facial growth and physiological health. In other words, the entire health of the individual is affected by whether they breathe through their nose or mouth. I often show this diagram in the courses. This is a cross section. Here is your nose. This is the part of the nose on your face that you're all aware of. However, this is the size of your nose. The part of the nose on your face is about 15 to 20 percent of the total size of the nose. Your nose goes right back into the skull. Nature is very economical, it doesn't waste space. It's not going to devote so much space to the nose, especially in the skull, unless it has major health functions. And humans are the most common species to breathe through their mouths. Mouth breathing is a rel relatively new phenomena. How do you know? Because skulls that were inerted in the 1600s, up until then, they had straight teeth. Mouth breeders have crooked teeth because the tongue isn't up in the roof of the mouth. And the first skulls with crooked teeth were found dating back to the 1600s. And the skulls that were unearthed were people from middle class and upper um, backgrounds who had more processed diet. 
it's very linked. The initial um, precursor to rhinitis and the effect it's having is very linked to diet and modern living. Modern living would also include stress, um, lack of exercise, stuffy environments, talking all day, etc. Those of you who might have occupations with talking, you might be quite tired at the end of it. And it will be due to the heavy volume breathing during it.